One thousand four hundred years ago, when the world was immersed in darkness, the Quran was revealed which brought light to a beleaguered world. And whereas the earlier books came with many scientific mistakes due to the hand of man having delved into them, the Quran had none of these contradictions. The world thought there could be no reconciliation between religion and science. But the Quran mentioned many scientific facts in great detail, like how a human being developed in the mother's womb and described other scientific facts which amaze the world's renowned scientists and scientific community. Such was the impact of these revelations that the first Islamic medical conference was held at the Arab League building, Cairo, Egypt, on the 26th of September, 1985. As far as it is known from the history of embryology, little was known about the staging and classification of human embryos until the 20th century. For this reason, the descriptions of the human embryo in the Quran cannot be based on scientific knowledge in the 7th, 7th century. The only reasonable conclusion is that these descriptions were revealed to Muhammad from God. He could not have known such details because he was an illiterate man with absolute, absolutely no scientific training. The key word in both is al-Ghaid, which could mean passing through or penetration of fluid into depth, like water going into the depth of the earth. And two, decrease in amount. The two statements refer to something which is passing through the female reproductive tract, which is decreasing and or increasing in size, and it is something whose future at this stage is known to no one except Allah. The most intriguing thoughts are from a hadith in Sahih Muslim, where Muhammad states as one of the signs of the coming of the day of judgment, that Arab areas will return to being, return to being fertile and green and with rivers. The archaeological and geological evidence that they once were green and will become green again is less than a century old. I have been asked, could Muhammad personally have known these things? The answer of a cautious scientist is, it is not impossible, but it would require a very sophisticated awareness of natural history. The growth of the fetus progresses rapidly until the beginning of the 12th week after which it enters a new phase of rapid growth and dramatic changes. The rapid growth and dramatic changes which occur after the bones have been clothed by muscles have been mentioned in the Holy Quran 1400 years ago. No such distinctive and complete record of human development existed before the Quran. It was many centuries afterwards that the human developmental stages were recorded in traditional scientific literature. The advances of modern developmental biology raise as many questions as they solve. And the physicians and scientists of today are perhaps more than ever before in need of the wisdom and counsel of scholars and religious leaders. It is not surprising then that we relook to, uh, to our holy scriptures for help and enlightenment. From what stuff hath he created him? From a sperm drop he hath created him and then moldeth him in due proportions. Surah 80, Ayah 18 and 19. Thank you very much. The Quran on Embryology. Professor Keith Moore is one of the world's prominent scientists in the fields of anatomy and embryology and is the author of the book entitled The Developing Human.
which has been translated into eight languages. The book is considered a scientific reference work and was chosen by the Special Committee in the United States as the best book authorized by one person. Dr. Keith Moore is the Professor of Anatomy and Cell Biology at the University of Toronto in Toronto, Canada. In 1984, he received the most distinguished award presented in the field of anatomy in Canada, the JCB Grant Award from the Canadian Association of Anatomists. He has directed many international associations, such as the Canadian and American Association of Anatomists and the Council of the Union of Biological Sciences. Let's now listen to what Professor Keith Moore has to say about the revelations found in the Qur'an 1400 years ago and what science has only recently been able to find out through detailed investigation. In the 1940s, uh, Professor Streeter of the Carnegie Institute of Embryology in Washington, D.C. proposed a system for classifying the stages of human development. His system arranged human embryos in 23 numbered sta stages based on their difference, differences in appearance. The Carnegie system of classification was used around the world until the 1970s when a more refined system was proposed by Dr. Ronan O'Reilly of the Carnegie Institute of Embryology, now in San Diego, California. Intensive studies of the Quran and Hadith in the last four years have revealed a system for classifying human embryos that is amazing since it was recorded in the 7th century AD. Although Aristotle, the founder of the science of embryology, realized that chick embryos developed in stages from his studies of hen's eggs in the 4th century BC, he did not give any details about these stages. As far as it is known from the history of embryology, little was known about the staging and classification of human embryos until the 20th century. For this reason, the descriptions of the human embryo in the Quran cannot be based on scientific knowledge in the 7th, 7th century. The only reasonable conclusion is that these descriptions were revealed to Muhammad from God. He could not have known such details because he was an illiterate man with absolute, absolutely no scientific training. The first uh, stage is ad ad adapt, and you'll have to apologize my, for my pronunciation. Uh, this is from Surah uh, Tariq 6. He is created from a drop emitted. This Arabic term refers to the forceful emission of fluids which occurs during ejaculation in the male and ovulation in the female. The male secretions, called semen, contain the spermatozoa, and the female secretions, called follicular fluid, contain the ovum. This is the stage of fertilization and the uh, nutva, and after the, this is what we call the zygote, uh, referred to in the Quran as the nutva, and the nutva undergoes uh, division, which we call cleavage, as it passes down the uterine tube. And so these are the stages of the nutva here as it undergoes uh, cell division. Uh, it is, this term is used several times in the Quran when referring to the beginning of development. After examining all these references, it is concluded that nutva re refers to the small drop of fluid containing the sperm and the ovum. The term nutva is also used to refer to the dividing zygote as it undergoes cleavage, cell division, and passes along the uterine tube to enter the uterus. This surah says, then he made his progeny from a quintessence of the nature of fluid despised. Sulala is an Arabic term, refers to the gentle extraction of the germ or sex cells from the millions that are uh, produced. There are 300 to 500 million sperms in the ejaculate of a healthy young male. Only one of these is extracted from the semen to fertilize the ovum. This shows a, a photograph of the millions of sperm uh, when they are ejaculated and only one of the several million sperms 
are, is drawn out, which is what is suggested by the word uh, sulala. Now, the same in the case of the uh, ovary, uh, uh, only one ovum reaches maturity and is expelled from the ovary, and it is extracted from the many thousands that are available in the ovary. Again, the idea of extraction or sulala. The next stage is amshaj, amshaj sura ad der tu. Verily, we recreated man from a mixture of a germinal drop. Uh, amshaj, then, as an Arabic term, is used in the Quran to describe the mixing of the sperms and the ovum. During fertilization, uh, the ovum rotates, rotates within the fluid containing the sperms until one of them is successful in penetrating its covering layers, which we call the corona radiata and the zona pellucida, which is this layer here. Yeah, I'll read it again in English. Uh, it's Surah Abasa 19. He created a new individual from Nutfa and immediately planned and